So this question, it's asking us about the relationship between the allowance for doubtful accounts balance and working capital. So let's take a moment and talk about each of these individually. So real quick, working capital, what is the formula there? It's simple, it's just current assets minus current liabilities. So where is allowance for doubtful accounts located in the balance sheet? Well, it's going to be part of current assets and specifically, it's going to be a contra asset under accounts receivable. So as you can see in the visual, the allowance for doubtful accounts balance allows us to state accounts receivable at net realizable value. So basically we have our gross accounts receivable balance, but for most companies, there is going to be some level of receivables that they won't collect. Now they'll have to estimate that, but that is going to reduce their gross accounts receivable balance down to accounts receivable net, right? So it's a contra asset and it's gonna lower our accounts receivable balance, which lowers overall current assets when we record allowance for doubtful accounts. So here's a quick example of a journal entry we would record when we record bad debt expense, right? So we have a customer and they say, okay, I'm not gonna be able to pay probably for a few months out. Now, if I'm the company, I'm thinking, okay, what are the chances they pay? Well, if they had a $100 invoice, I might say, I'm gonna reserve for that. So that $100, I'm gonna record it to bad debt expense. So as you can see, we would debit bad debt expense and we would credit allowance for doubtful accounts for $100. Well, when we credit allowance for doubtful accounts because it's a contra asset, that increases the balance. And remember, since it's bringing down total current assets, if we increase that balance, it's becoming more negative, so it's gonna drive down overall current assets. And if current assets goes down, so does working capital. So the correct answer here is going to be when we record bad debt expense, the impact to net working capital, it decreases it, right? It drives it down because overall current assets are getting smaller and there's no impact to current liabilities. So that's the correct answer. Treat, please try to understand the relationship between all these different accounts and how the income statement impacts the balance sheet and vice versa.